Hey, and welcome to the Mountain Cat Guitars podcast, where we discuss all things guitar related. My name is Doug Meyer, owner of Mountain Cat Guitars, and I've been buying and selling guitars professionally for over 25 years. From boutique guitar and amp builders, vintage guitar dealers and experts, guitar repairmen and luthiers, retailers, manufacturers, and of course, guitar players, we talk to the people who buy, sell, play, and of course, obsess over the things we love most, guitars. Hi, this is Doug from Mountain Cat Guitars. This is a very special edition of the Mountain Cat Guitars podcast because we are at the Guitar Shop NYC in Sunset Park, Brooklyn with the fellows who are responsible for this place. And we are very excited to announce our partnership with these fellows. We're going to be bringing handmade boutique guitars and amps to Brooklyn and therefore New York City. And we're here to talk about that. So, to my right is James Carbonetti. Hello again, Doug. Of and James Cobra Carbonet, he's already been on the Mount Cat Guitars podcast, and we've worked together for many years. To my left is Eric Coco from Labella Strings and the Guitar Shop, obviously. And to his left is Mas Hino, legendary New York City guitar repair guy, awesome dude, and partner in this place. So we are here, and why don't you guys, or one of you guys, or all of you guys, tell us how you started this place, because it wasn't originally in this location. Um, and how you guys all got together. Well, uh, I guess right after we left each other, I ended up starting uh, Cobra Guitars on... Right, Cobra and I worked together at two guitar shops in New York City. Chelsea Guitars and 30th Street Guitars. Yeah, that was a good one. And I left 30th Street right before you did. Yeah. I moved up to Suffern and started Map Cat, and you started Cobra Guitars. Yeah, and that was like 2009, 2010. Right, because I moved up in the end of 2009, yeah. so you were probably 2010 when you did co yeah. Thors. And then I met Moss uh, through our friend Chris. He said, you have to meet Moss. And then we hung out, and then you moved into Cobra Guitars. And that was on 3rd Street. That was on 3rd between 1st and 2nd, that was next cool. to Hell's Angels. Right, that was a cool spot. We talked about that in our podcast. That was podcast. fun. We partied there. <laughs> that block still kind of yeah. has nitro lacquer on the side. Oh, big time. <laughs> yeah. If you ever walk in that third street, you have to wonder one little one with you. glows in the dark. Yeah. That's fucking why. Yeah. So that was me, Eli, and then Moss joined, and then I met Eric uh, right at the same time, and you always helped me out and hooked me up, and that was also 2010. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, we just kind of stuck to each other. And you guys went to, to downtown Manhattan? Yeah, then we moved in from there into our friend Robert James' menswear shop right. on the top floor. I never got to see that one. That was a good one. Because I just moved up to Mountain Cat. It was Very small, that. And all, but in a huge shop. We had our, our corner of it. But we got a lot of stuff done there. Yeah, I know. Everyone was going there, and I really yeah. wanted to go there. I just never got to go there, and then you guys moved out here. Yeah, no, well, then we went to Robert's other shop. Oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> went to Robert James' other shop. You guys shop. are fairly mobile during those years. <laughs> Somehow. Uh, and I was on Atlantic Ave. Uh, right, I never saw that one either. Yeah, that was, so we had the whole basement of his shop, and that was a good one. Yeah, I never saw that one. And then we were there for six months. <laughs> our friend Jason built out a whole. Yeah, uh, I've seen pictures. Of it. it looked really cool. And then uh, we found this place on Craigslist and took it 2015. Yeah, this place is amazing. And I then, mean, Daniel will pan around and we can see the size of it. This is a big place. When we first moved in here, this right, was the wood shop, part. and the guy had a the photo studio upstairs. Oh. And uh, yeah, then there was like a salon, and there was. Oh, that's right. So there was a nice Italian girl from New Jersey doing it. Yeah. Right, that's right. It was nice. Very cute. And then, uh, yeah, then we ended up taking over the, the whole floor. This spot's amazing. And now we're together. So, it's most... Full circle, Doug. Yeah, yeah, it becomes a full circle. <laughs> if you stick around long enough, it's, <laughs> yeah. you know... Get the band back together. Right. <laughs> well, that's kind of what this is. Like We always say, we were all trying to recreate Chelsea guitars from a certain period, where it was yeah. just so much fun to be at. And that's pretty much what you guys have started here, and then what I'm really psyched to now be getting involved in is starting... It's a place where people just go and be comfortable again. You yeah. Know, like, you don't go to like big corporate guitar shops and hang out with your coffee. You just don't. Yeah. They don't want you to anyway. I feel but, like that was all of our family vibe. Like we knew places yeah. that we loved. And yeah, like out. we knew all our customers at Chelsea. Like yeah. really, did someone walk in, we didn't know. And if they did, we were like, hey, what's up? You know, yeah. like, you know, you know it's like it was a community. Yeah. You know, like we said, we don't even need more customers. We just need more guitars. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, we can sell guitars to our friends. You know, because like, you'd made so many friends because that store had been there for so long, and that's what hopefully will happen here. You yeah. know, 
you know, people need a place like that. You know, and I don't really see that in New York. Not to put down other New York City guitar shops because there's some really good ones. But you know, like, but like the way Chelsea used to be, like everyone just I used to just wake up in the morning, get my coffee, go to Chelsea, and so did everybody else. Yeah, you know, that's like, off. yeah, you. No, even before I worked there, that's yeah. how I started working there. You know, like, <laughs> like no one seemed to have a job. Everyone just yeah, Chelsea guitar. <laughs> so I actually got to work there, yeah. and so did you. You know, like, but you know, everyone else just hung out there. It was back before cell phones, even. So like, you could like play hooky from work and say you were doing other shit, and you can't do that now. No, because the cell phones, I like, can. They just can call you. Yeah, exactly. It ruins the whole thing. But like, <laughs> there used to be guys at Chelsea Guitars like would come in with their coffee in the morning, and I'd be there when I was closing. It's like, dude, you've been here for nine hours. <laughs> I was like, oh, really? What time yeah. you guys open in the morning? Yeah, like, oh, yeah. cool. Let's see that. Yeah, yeah, that's like, what's, yeah fun about because it's fun. fun. Like, hanging yeah. out guitars is fun, but it, it became a thing where guitar shops weren't like that. Mm -hmm. This place is all about community, right? You guys have that thing. Yeah. You know, it's like this is a place you're comfortable. You know, so like, so I. Think you know, and especially like boutique guitars. You know, I could do my thing and stuff, and it's great. But I don't really get foot traffic. You know, I'm in a, a town, and you know, not upstate, but it's only 26 miles from here. <laughs> but it's just not like that. People come and seek it out. But in New York City, there's so many guitar players. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I keep running to these guys. You know, guys who are in their early 30s playing in bands, killing it. You know, and they just are freaks for guitars. You know, so it's, there's guitar shops to go to, but no one would like to hang out and talk to other guitar dudes. Like, you know, Chelsea like bands for them. Guys met their girlfriends in there. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like everyone just hung out. It was like that's what music was for. You would go like, you know, to see a band at night and be in Chelsea, and then the guitar player would walk in and be like, "Oh, I saw your band last night. Oh, cool. What's your name? You know, you want to be friends with the guy. You yeah. Know, like, everyone kind of went there. You know, it was, and over time, small guitar shops were driven out of business by big corporate guitar shops. Or things changed, the internet happened, you know, like, so the business changes, but it's still people want that thing. Yeah. You know, and it's, most people shop online now. You know, like, but in a, store, in a place like New York City, where this, this dense with guitar players, there shouldn't be a place to go. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like, and we've been doing events here, like. Right, you guys do cool shit, plus you're repair guys, you're guitar builders, Eric has the oldest string company in the world. You know, like, you know, like it's kind of a no-brainer, really. Yeah. You know, like, but this is a really cool space to do this in. Yeah, no, it's gonna be great. How long have you had this space? We were here in 2015. You started. Oh, so you've been here a long time already. Yeah. We yeah. put in the put in the juice. And you do a lot of repairs, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Repairs have been great. Repairs. Yeah. Right. Because Mazda's, you know, yeah. been doing. Well, a little I stuff. remember you being on 48th Street when so, I first. Yeah. Well, when did you start it on 48th Street? Like '85. Oh. You were there long. Oh, you're there. Yeah. Yeah, cause I, I remember you being there like when I first moved to New York. You were already there. Yeah, exactly. For a long time. You were at Rudy's the whole time. Or you were yep. like, you were at Rudy's that whole time. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> How many years were you there? Fifteen years. Wow. Till two thousand. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. Rudy's a great guy. Yeah. And that's a great shop. I mean, that's. Yeah, yeah but you were building all the pencil sir. Exactly. And all that. Yeah, but so. you did all that stuff, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I, I think, remember. I remember when you how first paint, moved to New York. Assembly. All those pencil guitars or pencil guitars. Yeah, with John Sir. Right. Know. I learned with him for four years. Then I had to take over. Yeah, even Macchioni, I had to teach him certain lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, remember the time like Mark Knopfler was playing yeah, those, those, exactly. those were like the hip guitars to yeah, have. Yeah, I fixed all his vintage guitars. Right, he was your guy. Yeah, you were, yeah, you, yeah. you were his yeah. repair guy. Yeah, I remember yeah. everyone said, oh, Massimo, like, Mark Knopfler goes to him. You know, like, those and dark streets are the biggest fan of the world. The yeah. <laughs> Lou Reed came all Right, well, those cats. Well, there was a certain cats who went to Rudy's. Like, there was, like, that thing in New York where, like, you know, certain guys went to, say, Rudy's and certain guys went to Van Newman. Mm -hmm. And certain guys yeah. went to Chelsea, you know, mm -hmm. like, it was a different kind of guys. Mm -hmm. You didn't get that much. Like, people would go to all the shops, but, like, everyone had their own kind of home shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, usually a Rudy's guy wasn't necessarily a Chelsea guy. Right. It was kind of a different exactly. vibe. Exactly. You know, Matt Newmanoff guy mm -hmm. was slightly different. <laughs> Not that they were because guitar players always been in every yeah, store. Exactly. You know, but there were a lot of like just Mad Newman yeah. guys who were like that was their thing. They went to Old mm -hmm. Martins, they went to Mad Newman, you yeah. know, or whatever, you know, or they knew Matt or whatever. Right. Or if you knew Root. Really, you know, it's like exactly really if you're like Latin Latin guy, he'll probably treat you like Right, it's Rudy, yeah, right. Yeah, you know, like, Rudy, you know. And he had his yeah, group yeah, of guys exactly. who would only go to Rudy. You know, mm -hmm. and they, and that's what they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the way we all were. I just found yeah. Chelsea because I found Les first. You know, yeah. like, and then he was my kind of guy. You know, me, I, I like Dean. Yeah, because he was black. <laughs> <laughs> you 
he was, yeah. Probably still is. No, but he was, he was, he was the nicest guy there. Yeah. You know, it wasn't the color or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but he was cool. He could play guitar. Right. He could play bass. He was a really nice guy to talk to. And, yeah. He, but some of those shops, nice like, like we used to go when we were young. And they weren't particularly nice to young people. Mm -hmm. You know, like, we were going to 40 years ago. You know, they were just going, get out. <laughs> Like, nope. <laughs> yeah, that's funny too, because it's funny. Because the other people like, don't touch that. I'm like, Moss, it's fine. Let him play the guitar. He's like, no. Nope. <laughs> so we have both generations. Right. There. Yeah. Be mean to young people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing at Chelsea. Like, we would just let kids try guitars. Yeah. Just, you know, like, everyone was that kid once. Like, they'd be like, I'm very blissful. And like, you know, you go to 40 years, you'd be like, no, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know, you get a job. Exactly. Like, really? Like, you know, exactly. Yeah. But like, guys were coming to Chelsea, we let them play a last call. They you know, made their day. Yeah. And that kid got older and got a job in Wall Street. Yeah. <laughs> Go to buy a whole fucking place. You know, but like, then, they, you know, you never know. You know, you make a kid's whole world. You know, it's, I tried a Les Paul yeah. today. You know, like, wow, so cool. Yeah, you, know, you get like, obsessed. Yeah, like little, that's what little guitar shops are supposed to do. Like, you know, I can understand why the guys on 40 issue weren't being nice to us, you know, like, because exactly. they had real people, they were real money, and we were like, you know, like, but, you know, like, they were just famous for that. Well, they weren't particularly nice to anybody. You know, exactly. you know they were just known Unless to if you're mean. a fair guy. Right, they weren't like, even nice to each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, Night Bob started to we buy and... Not, right. He worked at Weebuy. Yeah, you know, he told mm -hmm. us he worked at Udolph too. Yeah, he yeah, also worked. Udolf, right, he worked exactly. at one of the other ones too. Mm -hmm. He worked, for, but he did a lot of stuff. He worked for Charlotte Jackson. Yeah, he was involved with mm -hmm. he, ESP right Yeah, podcast, he had you know. he developed the Cyber Twin with Fender. Mm -hmm. He's done a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And he said the original Cyber Twin sounded amazing, mm -hmm. and I'd heard they did, and something happened when they produced them, and it didn't <laughs> sound quite the same. Well, you know, like yeah. he, he's done a million things. Have you? Yeah, no, he's the best. That's why the podcast with him was interesting because I've heard him on other podcasts and he could talk about Aerosmith and all that. And he's a sound man, obviously. But our thing was really I wanted to talk to him just about stuff he'd done with guitars. Yeah. You know, awesome. and he's done a ton of stuff with guitars because in between tours. And then he said that one point where he stopped touring for a minute and just wanted to play in a band, he was working for Adrian. Mm -hmm. You know, working on a guitar shop, playing in a band. That's what you do. Yeah. In New York, you know, that's what we did. You know, like, but, you know, Bob did that and then he went back on tour with Aerosmith, got back together or something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like, but everyone worked in those guitar shops, yeah, you know, exactly. like, you know, and they, they were, when I first moved to New York, of course, I wanted to work in a guitar shop, but you couldn't get a job in a guitar shop, like, unless you had guitar shop experience. Exactly. Which at I, at that point. Yeah, what, what even year then, was it? you know, I moved to New York in, like, the very end of 89. Oh, I see, I see. So I didn't really have any experience. So like, I'd worked yeah. in a guitar shop in college briefly, yeah. but, like, I didn't know that much. But it was the bad part of it, maybe. Yeah. By the 90s, it was already... Yeah, yeah, know. but I went to Manny's. I went to all this place, and they'd give you like a job, you know, like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. like a thing to fill out. <laughs> but you're not going to get a job that way in those places. Like I was lucky to get a job at Chelsea because my friend had my job, mm -hmm. and his band broke up, mm -hmm. and you know he was moving away. You know, and said, "Oh, would you take my job?" It was just perfect timing because I didn't have a job. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I was just hanging out at Chelsea, being a loser like everybody else. You know, like, <laughs> I was like, a job. You know? <laughs> like, being a loser actually turned into a whole lifestyle. <laughs> Which leads to this, you know. Yeah. But just because I was hanging out, having no job, hanging out at the guitar shop, I actually got a job, you know. <laughs> and then I was the guy who had the job, and all the other loser guys who didn't have jobs were losers. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all in the same boat. Oops. Yeah. Still are, but you know that the only reason I got the job at that time was literally because I got fired from my job. A stupid clothes store I was working at. I don't know why I was in it, but and then I was just hanging out. Destiny. Well, you're right. Well, it was, it was the rock. All the rock and roll That's guys worked in this one place in the city at this clothes shop, and I guess they were all kind of ripping the place off. And I got kind of, <laughs> kind of worked there for two weeks. You know, I got fired. Yeah, I got fired with all them. You know, like some, like I got fired. I've been here long enough to get fired. It was the only job I ever got fired from. And I, I was like, really? There's like they're just cleaning house on this guy's friends, like. They hired all his friends. So every guy, every good guy who worked there was in a band. It was great. You know? I was like, this is cool. Because I didn't know shit about clothes. You know? <laughs> I couldn't even get the hanger to work right. You know? like, I didn't get the hanger to fall off. You didn't fall off. Like, hey, a little help. <laughs> How do these fucking things work? And I was yeah. falling on the floor. I was like, you know, I don't want to say which store it was, but you know, like it was, it was a really cool vintage clothes store. Everybody bought their you know, rock and roll clothes. You know, like, but it's fun. I don't think it's still there anymore anyway. But.
<laughs> say it too disturbing, but <clears throat> so just to get back to what you guys are doing here and what we're going to try to do together is, you know, since I have, you know, relationships with tons of boutique guitar builders, we wanted a place where people can try. Yeah. You know, just like your guitars. You know, you could look at your stuff on the internet and it looks cool, but it, there's nothing yeah, like when you can everyone touch. together. And then when you touch one of those instruments, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. You know, when you touch a handmade instrument, it's different. And it's nice to have the community of builders together. And well, that's really the thing. Different You know, because the, you know, you can have a vintage guitar shop. It's one thing. You know, these guitars are old. They're made a long time ago. You're not going to be doing it. It doesn't matter. You know, it's all about them being old and correct and, been, you know, like. But with boutique things, are made by a guy who you generally really, it's his passion to make that thing. Yeah. You know, like. So all the guys who I told, you know, like, who are going to have their stuff here even just initially that are brought up today, and there's going to be a lot more, are really happy to have a place where people could tr put their hands on it and play it. Yeah. You know, like, and that, you know, I sell a lot of boutique guitars, I sell a lot of them online, I ship them all over the world, guys know what they are, they go on forums, they read about them, but there's nothing, nothing substitutes playing. Yeah, totally. You know, when you put your hands on a handmade instrument, you can feel it. Yeah. You know, you pick up it like a new, not this shit on a new because <laughs> you know, they're fine, you know, but, but they're factory made guitars. They make lots of guitars. You know, Fender you know, makes a lot of guitars. They know they do. You know. Can we show you what James is working on right now? Yes, please. Oh. Because not only can you, you can come and play these boutique guitars, but when you come into a place, right, you can see where this. The, the people right. at the shop are building are building a guitar. Well. Like, yeah, most so people never get to see a guitar it's in a this different form. vibe. Like this is going to be someone's guitar. Yeah, you know, like it's really really cool. But you know, like that's really cool. Yeah, it's been. <laughs> but you know, that's super, yeah, most people never get to see their guitar. And yeah, then builds. someone can come in if we're yeah, not making feel the, a neck. Yeah, if you want a bigger, well, smaller, kind of really more. There's a person. different level of respect in, you know. Yeah, but you know, this is going to be somebody's here, instrument that they're going to make yeah. music on. That's a special relationship. That's yeah. what I always try to tell people. Like, it's all custom made. Yeah, it's that made by all We make the pickups. You know, right, you guys make all your stuff. it. But I mean, this is going to be, you know, like someday we'll have a podcast and this will be a done guitar. Yeah. Or you'll see it's, you know, we'll get pictures of it. But soon, soon right? <laughs> but this is super cool. And you say this model now has a name, right? Yeah, the Gauntlet. There we go. <laughs> is this the first one to have a name? No, I thought it's No, there, there's, there's some names. Yeah, because on the last podcast, they didn't seem to have names. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was two months ago. Yeah. <laughs> but this is super cool. What else do you guys have? have around here in this form where um, they generally get finished and they leave. This is an awesome bass that Moss has made. Whoa. Moss, what's up with this baby? It's called the, the, what is it? The Columbo? Columbo. 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 <laughs> Columbo. Columbo. The dove. It's the dove. It's the, the left He's side nice. is a male. That's a female right there. That's male, female. The male got a crown because of that. The, the top is opposite. The female is the, the like left, on the, logo, yeah. the right, and it's for peace. That's super cool. This thing sounds amazing. Yeah, and the awesome. fingerboard is so bloodwood. What is it? Bloodwood. Bloodwood? So people got shot in that Florida incident. So I kind of like a it. tribute base, right? Oh, I thought it was <laughs> <laughs> something really much more morbid than that. <laughs> like they didn't actual blood. blood. Because, it, because it's, it's if you soak it in water or something, it, it became like red. red. It's called blood. What? Yeah, I never it's heard of that. Wow, this thing sounds good. Yeah, it's a nice one. It's not an open string. <laughs> The slam. They're all made here, everything's made here. Yeah, yeah like Daniel Pan Round, they're made right there. Scratch. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay, I'll show you this one. And this is a project we're doing together. Yeah. This is made yeah, like, like, this is Right, well, we did this. Was this the same one you brought for the last podcast? Maybe. Maybe one of them. But this is like the, the like genesis black. of the team, the core team. And wow. uh, we make the P bases. But no, the last one was like a kind of one of the Fender lighter colors. It was like a pink oh, really? one. Oh, a show, yeah, show pink one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it sounded amazing. I mean, it sounded yeah, like this that one. That one went to Brazil. All right, that was someone's going to be. This one's just as good. This one has these black strings. I love these. Black and those, uh, what kind of body was that? That's a Macor. Macore. 
Wow, it's so weird. Hearing like well, it's like a new woods here today. What yeah. was the other one? Uh, that was. Pop but those are made of. Right? Was it the um, that that Agassiz? Right. I never heard of that. Yeah. I do guitar stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the cheap guitars. Right. Yeah. Well, um, reasonably well, well, priced. We call. Well, them. reasonably priced guitars. I should well, say. Totally Cut woods are doing or delivering. <laughs> Right. Those are just not synonymous with the vintage woods. Uh, no, but you know, there. sometimes you know, guys will make me like prototypes just out of poplar. Mm. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, exactly. yeah, like, yeah, like, like what's wrong with poplar? Well, Leo's just not too, expensive, right? It's like right? older. I mean, right. so, but if people always use them because they get it so cheap they can make yeah, prototypes yeah, exactly. out of it. Like, so that's amazing. But yeah, then Dan Armstrong made a guitar of plexiglass and it sounded amazing. Yeah. <laughs> See, like, it doesn't have to be a great tone wood. Yeah, those guitars sound amazing. I love this. Whoa, this one's really cool. Yeah, that's yeah, wow. awesome. Super light. That one's my hobby body. Whoa. Blah. It's, 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 uh, what is it, uh, Purple Heart Fingerboard, Peruvian Walnut. I can't get Peruvian Walnut anymore, so no. I'm like pissed. <laughs> wow, that's a good time to talk. That is loud. Which strings are these? Ours. Yeah, but which ones? <laughs> Tens. I think those are the Tens. Tens. The benders. The vintage sauce. I love these. This is amazing. Some kind of strange peanut guitar in the 70s. Like and that's Jerry like Garcia. I only got five four yeah. piece single coil with a dummy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it sounds like a single coil, basically. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a Dill Arlen. It's hollow, hollow barrel, like an X bracing pattern. These are flats, though. Flats, flats 12. Your flats don't sound like other people's flats. Because I use stainless steel uh, ribbon wire. Is that what? Because they still they feel like flats. See, so this must have been like this is the original flat lines. Right. Yeah. But that, this must belong to Beatles. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's not like you play other people's flat lines and they're like <laughs> the jazz strings. <laughs> you know, they they all the famous. Yeah, that's well. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jimmy Rainey and. All those famous jazz cats were using stainless steel. Yeah, because you could get them really low without buzzing. Right. Yeah, they, they some of them meow meow meows. But they it, feel like it, regular it strings. They feel yeah. different. Yeah. They don't sound that different. They have like a different, somewhat different tone quality, but they sound like oh flat ones. You know, yeah. Like, well, flat ones are they're, more in tune. I feel like. Right. Yeah. The, right. the strings, flat. like when you play chord, the strings are. Doesn't have too much wave yeah. to the strings. Right. It's more like getting more the fundamental of it. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've been playing the flats now for yeah. a bunch of years. Five years now, maybe. You never looked back. That no. Yeah. <laughs> I switched. We made. But I use a lot of some special stuff too. Yeah. Here's the brass flat so ones. Gold. Yeah. That changes the tone. Nice. But these don't feel like traditional. They don't feel like flat lines that you would normally. <laughs> also, feel. I have it. Those are the traditions. Oh that, right. You know, it feels yeah. really light. Countless albums. Right. When the, you know, late 30s to late 50s, these are George Benson was using these. Yeah, exactly. And these are the bone flats that Eric did. Ooh. And these are both the 12 to 15. I've heard this guitar. Yeah. 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 This guitar sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. Really changes the tone. I haven't changed them for months. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, there's a lot of delay. It's fun to have, have it be yeah, you want that real individual. Thing. Yeah. What's the top of that? Oh, that's uh, Frankie and Walnut. Mahogany core, Frankie and Walnut, well. and Bloodwood fin uh, back, Bloodwood back. But cool things. You'll take closer to these. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's beautiful. It's hard. It's a nice material.
is awesome. Yeah. And then we're starting to do these in the shop now. The Emilio. Right. He's like a truck. Awesome. They're really, it's, you know, the cool thing about this, they're 100% sustainable. The wood, the wood made guitars. They're very earth friendly. And you're not really, you know, you're not compromising anything on tone. You're using flats on maple, roasted maple necks. And these are built here. You know, James is mixing the paint. We're putting, we're hot rodding it out with really nice parts. It sounds great though. This is a guitar made in Brooklyn, you know? It's, and we'll put better pops and a better yeah. bridge, better pickups. This sounds great though. Yeah. And what, what was this one? Hey guys, this. <laughs> I spelled that. Sounds like a Roman emperor or something. A G A T I S. Gatsis. Where does that come from? Africa. It's like an African. <laughs> and the fingerboard is actually maple, even though it looks like ebony. It's what? It's completely it's roasted. It's roasted. It's like the yeah. fingerboard? Yeah. yeah. Compressed or something. No, it's in. Uh, in yeah. Yeah. It's, really? uh, it's very dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's definitely it's dark. It's maple. It's maple. Yeah. See, and you don't paint it? No. No. People, are, it's kind of. I don't get it. <laughs> How does it get like that? But that's they no, burn it. Cool. And then it's you also like, like a 12 know, to 15 radius. You do it in a so pressurized like ladder. And it turns black? Yeah, it's roast because it's cooking. Yeah. yeah. But just think about the neck itself. No, that neck is maple. Just maple. Yeah. yeah. So that and that are the same blue. Yeah. yeah. This is just, so. that's great. <laughs> it looks like Brazilian rubber or ebony. Yeah, it's like ebony. But you could now export this around the world, no problem, no side east papers, nothing. Right. And that's another cool. That's time. becoming exactly. a big thing now. Yeah. It's yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it took it me is. five months to get uh, one permit. They, oh, I know. I they did. now have a new rosewood <laughs> division, and it's <laughs> very highly intense. Like Mike, <laughs> that guitar <laughs> have all that. Fish and wildlife. Yeah, do you get a badge? <laughs> yeah, like I had to become an importer of like because I was doing. There was one company I was dealing with that was doing Brazilian rosewood and saying it was Brazilian rosewood. Mm -hmm. They were from Israel. And I had to become an, an importer of endangered species, mm -hmm. so I could import like an ostrich or something mm -hmm. if I wanted to. <laughs> I never did, <laughs> but I could. All right, well, but <laughs> there's a flora and fauna list inside these, and that all this weird, mm -hmm. odd and plants you could yeah. now like oh, this whole list yeah, of plants I could import. And lion pelts. <laughs> I that. You know, I was like, what am I getting into here? Like, so okay, can I have a guitar and a couple of lion pelts and an ostrich? <laughs> I think there's about thirty thousand species of just flora. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading this. I was like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. And, then, then I, and even with the permit, the stuff gets hung up. Yeah, of course. Five months it took me. Yeah, I got stuff stuck in the port of Bayonne. <laughs> what? That's where it comes in. And wow, when it was it was coming from Israel, there were B and G guitars from Tel Aviv, Israel, and they were offering real Brazilian rosewood as an option, like straight up. The, you know, they had it worked out. But still, when they came in, it had to be at the dock. Had to be investigated by. Had to be inspected by three different government agencies. Mm. It was a uh, health and wildlife. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Another because one they, and another. Because one. they are together. Right, and they yeah, all yeah. three had to sign off on it, and all the paperwork was there. <laughs> but you had to, they had to physically go there. Mm -hmm. You know, like See what to, it so is. you get three different government yeah. agencies to get a guy over mm -hmm. there. They have the right to do that here at JFK yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, but this stuff was just, coming in by boat, I guess. Yeah. So like. I That's guess crazy. it could come in a lot of different ways, but the Port of Bayonne is where this stuff would go. And sometimes it would only be a week or two and then it would show up at my house and sometimes it would sit because we couldn't get one agency to get a guy there. And I just had it with a guy, a, a customer brought me a guitar that he had, had sent from Germany. Mm. A Daimol guitar, I'd never seen one for a really great builder in Germany. His guitar got hung up in the Port of Bayonne for four months. but. Someone had played it, obviously, in the Porto Boyum for four months. Because <laughs> the frets were worn out. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> like it had severe fret wear. Jeez. Like, so someone must have been playing it every day. <laughs> he knew his shit. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy gets his guitar and it's like it needs oh, a GMB. Like, <laughs> wow. And it was all to get out. It was all fucked up because it sat, but I think it must wow. have sat somewhere that was damp. Yeah, it was on the dock. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> 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 The poor guy. We got the guitar sorted out for the guy, but like, because it was a customer of mine. Mm -hmm. But he, he didn't order this guitar through me, he ordered it from the guy. That's funny. And he brings it over, he tells me this whole story, and the wiring had gotten messed up. It could have been in the. Sometimes when they ship things, when they go in the plane, someone said the can pop solder joints. 
because of the pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess that's true. That's like, true. So some, and it had a lot of, it had a piezo, it had all this complicated wiring, it was really cool, but it wasn't all working. And it turns out really all we had to do is like, just keep spraying the pots, like since it was on the docks, I guess. Like, yeah. Just, yeah. I guess, soft, yeah. and it just got in these things. So we don't, there was nothing, we opened it up and there was never really anything there. Yeah, so, you know, air. But someone was playing yeah. the guitar every day. This is some guy who's in there like, whatever, <laughs> I got a guitar I'm here. I'm telling you, bro. He's a guitar guy, so he works there. He's like, yeah, I'll take that one. Until so someone comes, yeah. you're like, they're making they have no hurry to get the government over there. Like, oh, no guitars here. Yeah, that was just recently. This was like last week. Mm. This went on. Wow. Finally got, yeah, finally got wow. the thing sorted out for the guy. Wow. Yeah, crazy stories happen with these things. I'm sure you'll play them. You know, everyone who mm. ships right. guitars around the world, you know. Yeah. Racket out there. Right. You know, it's just, you know, like, because it's crazy, you could just take a guitar and ship it to Belgium. Mm -hmm. And now, sometimes I guess they're only three days. I just fixed some maintenance pickups I just shipped to Australia yesterday. Yeah, so Australia. I wound them and I shipped them to Australia. Australia can be tricky. All these countries are different. It's expensive. Right, well, Australia's the halfway around the world. But then sometimes it's not. Every time you go to ship, to, we shipped the guitar to Australia recently. I told the guy, yeah, it'd be about 500 bucks. It's $180. <laughs> I shipped the same exact guitar to Australia and it was five hundred dollars. Like, why? I was gonna argue, but like I told you guys shipping would be like five hundred bucks, which it usually is. Yeah. And UPS is like a thousand. I had a guy who wanted you know, Australia wanted a guitar and it had to be UPS, it could be anything else. It was like a thousand dollars. He was like, alright. They're used to it. Yeah. Yeah, he just preferred UPS. He must have had a bad experience. The Europeans are used to waiting that long because their laws have been in place for much longer than us. Right. And they're like, oh, it, you know, I'm okay with that. I know what it takes. It's right. Like, yeah, Americans are not cool. Very patient. <laughs> like, we're here today. Yeah, you get there all the time. But, you know, but we, we do digress slowly. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, and we are having a party tonight. So by the time this airs, the party will happen. So Hangover. Inviting you to it yes. now would be useless. But we'll, we'll come to the next there. one. <laughs> but, yes. so we are, um going to kind of wrap it up and begin to go get prepared for our party. But you know, the main purpose of this podcast was to tell everybody that we are doing this and we're really, I'm super happy to have a place finally in New York City because we almost did a few times we were going to do it at Daniel's apartment at one point. <laughs> or just, you know, just a place where people go try these but to have an actual shop. Yeah, and bring the community together. It's like right, with with place where, I'm, so I'm going to come here and hang out all the time because this is going to be fun. But, but just like, you know, Chelsea used to be where, yeah. you know, you sit around and go, oh, I'll, yeah, I'll be the next Saturday. Come, we'll have lunch, yeah. hang out. Talk guitars for a few yeah, hours, get a beer. Yeah, and then you just make friends. Too. And then you're like, oh, you're in New York, you gotta go to this place. Like, you'll be there all day, it's super cool. You, know, you guys obviously are spending vinyl. You know, that's what guitar shops were about. Like, when we all got at Chelsea, like, every day you'd go home hearing about new music. Just so I remember G. Smith telling me I have to listen to Free. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I discovered Peter Green. Yeah. You know, like, everyone was a Peter Green fanatic and Leo Kotke and Magic Sam. Mm -hmm. and, just all this music, it was all about music. Yeah. You know, and then guitar shops weren't, they were about, you know, like, you know, volume, you know, so, you know, but you wouldn't walk into a guitar center and like, I, I shouldn't shut up a guitar center, but. You could shut up a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Whatever. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, it's just not a, it's not a community store, obviously, yeah. it's an organic chain. It's what we call, you know, um, supermarket. You know. Or just, yeah, but I mean, a large chain can't be what this is. That's why, like, a Fender guitar can't be what this can be. It's yeah, not we have all those strings guitar. too from the factory. Like right, obviously, yeah. We don't, don't carry just the strings, best seller. Right. We carry the best Suzuki strings, right? <laughs> Sitar strings, right? There's Double more things. variety on this wall, wall than there is in the yeah. largest goddamn guitar center in the world, right? Yeah, and that's you know the thing. You know, this is you know these places were supposed to be specialty places. You know, the guitar center can be special artists. Places. So right, that's all. You know, yeah, and that's what about Chelsea was. Danny, you know, who owned Chelsea Guitars was. It was never really focused on like proper shit, like the way you, you would think. But that's what made it so cool. Yeah. He was into art. And he was into watches. And he was into Corvettes. And he was into whatever was cool. He loved art. guitars. You know. <laughs> Everything is art. Right. But he was whatever. Watches. You know, you go into shops. You have the shit in there. Wasn't even guitars. You know, yeah. Surfboards. I mean, because he got into collecting surfboards, and there were bicycles. Those vintage <laughs> bicycles from <laughs> fucking everywhere. You're yeah. like, you know, you'd like, you know, like. The one time the Moosehead showed up, the yeah. Moose, Dennis Kelly actually quit that day. He's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, I'm not dealing with fucking Mooseheads. Oh. We have deer heads here. We have 20 foot pythons. Oh, yeah. Yes. Got some, oh, wow. Turkey. 
fun having like the space here where we can bring yeah, Adam from whoosh. satellite because we're all friends and like right all well then like now when Adam comes to town you know we'll come here yeah you know so if somebody wants to talk about satellite yeah, amp or they want to turn his amps on 10 too and right and that's matter. how he does see that's like a guy like Adam yeah. you know like if you, he turns on his amp he turns like on we 10 build stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> you do that yeah. <laughs> that's why you're like you got to get where it goes yeah like <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like you know, like yeah, like you can't do that in these little places. Yeah, yeah like you know, yeah, you that room look. sounds amazing. Yeah, and you turn up an amp. We have bands sounds. playing there, and right? Different but, things. And yeah, that's why this is like a really cool, cool opportunity yeah. to do something really cool in the biggest city in the United States. You know, yeah. like you know, still you know needs a hang. You know, everyone needs a place to hang out. You know, like listen to music, hang out. You know, that's what music is about. That's why people it's start music playing store. music. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's like that's why people pick up instruments. Yeah. You know, they're obviously looking for that. Inspired. Yeah, you can't. Well, generally, don't play an instrument by yourself. Yeah. You play with other people, and it's a community, and then it's a whole thing. And that's what I think gets lost over time. Or, you know, the internet, you know, it kind of defeats some of that, and then it, it brings people so together to, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, so you could listen to some music by some guy who made it in his basement in Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, wow, this guy's badass. You know, yeah. like, you never have You know, so it, it has its pros and cons. It changed the guitar business completely. Yeah. You know, but that's. That's necessarily for the, for the worse, no. you know, maybe for the better, you know, because you can go online and find anything. Like, years ago, you would go to guitar shops and you would, like, see something you read about, like, once. Yeah. You know, like, you can go on Reverb right now and find nine of them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, oh, it's nothing's that hard to find anymore. Because yeah. it didn't happen in your local shop, you were never going to see it. Mm -hmm. That's why Chelsea was amazing, because we went through a lot of gear. Yeah. So we saw a lot of shit, but nothing compared to what you can find on your computer right now. <laughs> you know, like, but we got to play it. Yeah. You know, which was cool and, and mess with it and learn about it, you know, like, but really, like, some, most things were so hard to find. And no one had a guitar shipped to them back then. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember Chelsea, like, before the internet, maybe they shipped the guitar once or twice. Like, it was, like, a freak to be, like, packing something up. And then, even when the internet came out, we're like, who's going to buy a guitar without trying it? No one's going to do that. Everybody. Yeah. It's like, every guitar every Because if you don't like it, just put it back in the box. Yeah. And ship it right back. I mean, it's awesome because you could you could buy anything. You could, someone could tell you about some super rare guitar. You go, oh, here's one. Oh, here's one cheaper. I'll buy that one. You know, it's done. You know, you could find it, which is kind of cool and kind of not as cool. Like, yeah. it's like with yeah. records when you see you them searching them. for records. Exactly. Like you, you can find the one. You look for right? BB King records, and they didn't make those anymore. When you would find one, you know, it's, it's come really through, cheap. It's like, oh my god, yeah. BB King live at the Regal. I found one. You know, because they didn't make it. You couldn't go on the internet and order it because there wasn't yeah. an internet. <laughs> you know, like, so like, but, but it was so exciting when you found it. Yeah, but, because it's like two dollars, so you bring it to them. You you try not to be happy. So you know, if you're happy, he might bring the prices up. Right. I feel like so. I'm like, I feel like okay, just pay two dollars. I just want to get the fuck out of there. At least like when I was in college, it was like a record store, and they like color coded. The things and that's mm -hmm. was the prices, mm -hmm. but there were yeah. stickers. So of course, you'd be. <laughs> <laughs> I would prefer to pay blue. <laughs> oh, you know, I can't afford red. So you're no longer red. Yeah. You're blue. <laughs> yeah, the red was like twenty dollars. I'm like, I can't pay twenty dollars for anything. Yeah. I can pay three dollars though. <laughs> now you're blue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. Somehow we've brought these records to every shop. You know, it's all bad, you know, but you gotta listen to music on one. There's no, yeah. no other way to listen to music. But, like, to sit around in a place like this and li actually listen to music. Like, half the time in Chelsea, we were listening to music. You know, everyone would bring in, like, we had a CD burner for a while. Yeah, And then everyone would just bring in, like, 50 blanks. Yeah. <laughs> all day. Just be, yeah. The phone would be ringing. You're like, yeah, fuck that. I'm in the middle of burning something. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, half the things I have my ass are still burnt from, like, a needless handwriting on them. You yeah. know, like, you know, you're live. You know? So I yeah, still you, tape. You still make tapes. Yeah, I cassette still tapes. Make tape. He yeah. makes tapes here. Makes tapes. Can you still get cassette tapes? Yeah. yeah. Really? We have a whole yeah. I I haven't yeah. seen a cassette player in so long. He makes he makes uh, <laughs> vinyl mixes, and we're listening to it. Sometimes it starts skipping, and I go, and the record player is not going. <laughs> it's a cassette. <laughs> Yeah. That's like when we were kids, you would make mixtapes. You know, like it, yeah, exactly. And they would, you know, like it, you would hear the record. And Ross has a flip phone and makes mixtapes still. Wow, <laughs> you are the shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why 
I was spinning here for like. See, it all comes around. Happened. So if you just yeah. stay where you exactly. are, it all comes back. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Next year, everyone's gonna have flip phones again. Mm. Yeah. And it'd be like, hey, cool. I never had to bother. Yeah. I don't burn, man. Yeah. I don't burn. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck phones. They can't flip. <laughs> I trust a phone yeah. that can't flip out. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're here from noon to eight, pretty much every seven days a week. Listen to, seven days seven days. listen to vinyl, hang out, fixing shit. It says one o'clock on your That's website. That's me. <laughs> I live down the block now, so yeah. I um, You remember like, when they could tell us, like, we opened at like, 11, but no one could get there. No. That's the only reason I ever had a job, is I was the only morning we'd get there before 11. I would sometimes stay up and get there. Right, yeah, you guys were just coming from the bars. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, it's going to be a rough day. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this one. That <laughs> <laughs> was Dennis Kelly's thing. He would just come in and be like, Go to sleep. You go up and make a gig bag bed. Uh, you taught me that one. <laughs> I didn't even snoring up there. <laughs> People like, is Dennis here? I'd be like, shit. <laughs> you go wake him up. Yeah. Oh, I'm not fucking waking him up. <laughs> Everybody slept in there. Yeah. Uh, every generation, I slept up there. After yeah, Daniel, Daniel some point. slept up wow. there. <laughs> wow. Just take the nap on the. Yeah, so now all the up there. kids are going to be sleeping in this place somewhere. Where's the nap area? The uh, floor. Yeah. Well, we're sitting on a couch, actually. Not on, not on we never couch. had a couch. Yeah. That would be the end of it. I've, even, I've learned. You never got people off there. <laughs> this is my hungover spot. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, there was a couch in Chelsea. I don't have to hide anymore. This. Yeah, man. <laughs> Fuck it. It's my place. Do what I want. <laughs> yeah, if it's our guy, I can call him down and get nap time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so don't call my place between two and three. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I guess we've said enough for today. You know, um... Yeah, sure. Um, but we're super excited. I'm super excited to have my guitars here. I love yeah. this place, and I'm going to be here this a lot. Be great. And come to the Guitar Shop at NYC and hang out. Yeah, come by. Daniel, thank you. Every day. Jack, thank you. And we'll see you all soon. Downtown.